Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So in this video, we're going to be looking at safety and security, which is chapter eight from the ICT IGCC course. Let me go ahead and make this full screen. Uh, we're going to be starting off by looking at physical safety risks in a classroom office environment. And one of the risks could be electrocution from spilling and drinks onto your device. So what you could do is if you're drinking from a bottle, make sure the lid is fastened tightly. Um, if you, or make sure if you have coffee and tea, you keep it away from the computers, maybe don't drink, bring it into the lab or office and desks. Um, obviously, if you do spill your liquid onto a device, you could be at risk of electrocution. So you need to be careful about that. And also fire from either sockets being overloaded. So you can have a look at this picture here. Uh, so many plugs have been plugged into this one extension cable or from equipment overheating. So we can ensure uh, plug sockets or extension cables are not overloaded. And for the equipment overheating, we can make sure we have the correct ventilation in the room. Um, so it's not getting too hot and the equipment is not covered. Obviously what we don't want is the equipment to overheat and then obviously uh, catch fire. So we want to make sure the room is ventilated. Uh, tripping over trailing cables is probably very common in a classroom office environment. So we need to make sure, first of all, any bags, any obstacles are moved away from their pathway. Um, we, can, we can make use of cable ducts to cover cables. And we can make sure cables are tucked away um, underneath the desks. Right, so what strategies can we in, uh, minimize, uh, what strategies can we apply to minimize um, potential safety risks? So we can make sure the equipment has been checked on a regular basis. So for example, um, in design technology, you have lots of machinery and you'll notice there's always stickers on the back of the machinery to tell us when the last time the equipment passed the safety standards. Okay, so if you're not checking your equipment over a number of years, then there's more risk of something going wrong with that particular equipment. Uh, regular check on the state of um, cables, plugs to ensure there's nothing exposed. The use of wireless connections to eliminate the use of cables. Okay, and ensuring potential trip hazards are under the desks as mentioned. Okay, so Data Protection Act. Uh, data Protection Act applies to paper-based or electronic forms of data stored on the computer. The Data Protection Act is to protect the rights of the individual from whom the data is obtained from. Web-based businesses such as Amazon or eBay store sensitive data about customers, including payment details. They would have to abide by the Data Protection Act to keep the data secure. So worst case scenario is you've uh, set up an account with one of these web, um, companies. Um, and then it doesn't have to be this, com this company the company's mentioned. It could be another company. And then your details get passed on to a third party who would then have access to your data. Obviously, we don't want that to happen. So for that reason, we have the Data Protection Act to protect your data. The data in this act, so this, these are some principles that we need to follow. The data must be fairly and lawfully processed. Data can only be processed for the stated purpose. Data must be adequate, relevant, or not excessive. Um, data must be accurate. Data must not be kept longer than necessary. Data must be processed in accordance with the data subject rights, must be kept secure, and must not be transferred to another country unless they have adequate uh, protection. So these are some basic principles that we need to know about uh, protecting data. And here are some questions. So explain the need for copyright legislation uh, when data has been published on the internet. Um, just before we answer this question, you may have come across some other videos where other YouTubers are using my resources and they have put their name over my name and then they're passing um, the work off as their own. And obviously, you know, they're not seeked my permission to use my work. So if I would have copyrighted my work, then I would have protected my rights. And if anyone wanted to use my work, then they would have had to seek my permission. Um, I, you know, back in the day, I used to share my PowerPoints um, on my website and obviously people have these um, resources. I don't mind if they want to use them, but I think when people start putting their name 
over my name and I'm passing it off, you know, as uh, their own work, then that's where there is a slight issue. But anyway, let's have a quick look at this question here. So explain the need for copyright legislation when data is published on internet. So copyright is a legal and an exclusive right to copy or permit or to be copied some specific work. If you own a copyright on the content of a web page, someone else cannot make a copy of it without your permission. Uh, copyright usually originates with the creator of a work and copyright supports the original producers of the work. Okay. And here's a question about um, data protection. So just cut this question short. Let's just look at here. List four. Um, oh, do you know what? I might as well read a question. A patient has an injury and a doctor treating him needs to find out information about the patient. Most of the data he needs to be collected is personal data. The data collected is protected by data protection. And most data protection acts include the principle that data should be kept confidential and secure. List four other principles of a typical data protection act. So data should not be kept longer than necessary. Uh, data should be collected for a specific purpose. Data subjects are allowed access to their personal data. And data should be kept accurate and up to date and should only be processed for the state of purpose. So here what we have are examples of personal data. Okay, so contact details like your phone number or email address, your details of where you live, so your address details, personal images, family details, passwords, political views, medical history, payment details, including bank, credit card, debit details. And let's have a look at some of these questions here. Oops. Zoom out a little bit. Okay, why personal data should be kept um, confidential and, protect and protected? So status updates can alert people of your location at a particular time. So it's really important, guys, you're not sharing your status updates all the time because what you don't want is to be at risk of, of um, you know, people finding you where you are. You know, obviously people that you don't want to bump into can find your location. So just be careful about sharing your status updates of your location all the time. Um, if your data is available, it can be easily be stolen, copied or passed on. Um, if you're sharing, for example, pictures, then you could be blackmailed and threatened into doing in inappropriate things. So please make sure you're not sharing your pictures um, with strangers. Um, your details could be passed on to a third party. So we need to make sure your data is protected, is kept confidential, so these things cannot happen. And how can we avoid um, the inappropriate disclosure of personal data? Ensuring privacy settings in social media sites have been activated. Do not share data via social media or emails with strangers. So only make sure you've activated your privacy settings and also you're only sharing your data, your content with people that you actually know. And do not post inappropriate content images um, online because you may take it down, but in the meantime, someone else may have taken a copy um, of those pictures. So just be careful. Um, we've got some questions here. Uh, explain why personal data should be kept. Explain why personal data should be kept confidential and secure. So you can be basically identified from the data. Uh, the data is meant to be confidential. Okay. If someone wants to get access to your data, then they can use that data to attack you, basically. Um, personal data should be kept confidential and secure to protect the sensitive data and also the person involved. Um, let's have a quick look at this. Due to data protection laws and personal data should be kept confidential and secure. Explain why personal data should be kept confidential and secure. So the data will have name medical information attached. Therefore, it needs protecting. The data is confidential as it links directly to a person. The data will be sensitive. Um, if the information was released, this would damage the surgery's uh, reputation. So I think it's linking to a doctor's um, question. Patients would lose trust. Also, data should be kept secure to prevent fraud and identity theft. So you can see uh, some high, uh, key parts highlighted in yellow. Okay, guys, um, that's the end of the first part of this chapter. Please join me in the next part where we discuss why e-safety is required. Thank you for your time. Drop your comments below, like and share, and good luck if you have an exam tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.